Hey everybody, it's been a while since my last video, and I can't thank you enough for continuing to comment, subscribe, and support this channel. Before we get started, please take the time to like and subscribe the video below, and enable notifications because I have more videos on the way and I'm hoping to keep the content coming bi-weekly. Anyways, let's get to the reason why we're all here. The Shining and the Grady Dilemma. Many of you have commented that you'd like to see me tackle the issue of the two Grady's in the movie. For those who are unaware, there seems to be a discrepancy in The Shining where the former caretaker of the Overlook is called by two different names. At first I thought this was probably an error since Kubrick was constantly writing and rewriting the script on set. But you guys made the point that Kubrick was meticulous with his films and even edited the ending of The Shining after it debuted in cinemas. So I did some research and found what I believe to be the answer to the Grady conundrum. In the beginning of the film, where Jack sits down with the hotel manager, Stuart Ullman, Ullman mentions that a Charles Grady went crazy and killed his two children in the winter of 1970, ten years before the events of The Shining. I don't suppose they uh, told you anything in Denver about the tragedy we had up here during the winter of 1970? I don't believe they did. Well, uh, my predecessor in this job hired a man named Charles Grady as the winter caretaker. And he came up here with his wife and two little girls, I think about eight and ten. And he had a good employment record, good references. And from what I've been told, I mean, he seemed like a completely normal individual. But at some point during the winter, he must have suffered some kind of a complete mental breakdown. He ran amok and uh, killed his family with an axe. Notice two things. First are the ages of Charles Grady's children. They're not twins. They're eight and ten. Second is that Charles was alive at the same time as Jack. This was ten years before the events of The Shining. Now let's go on to the second scene where Grady is introduced. Grady? Yes, sir. Delbert Grady. That's right, sir. Uh, Mr. Grady, <clears throat> haven't I seen you somewhere before? Well, no, sir. <laughs> I don't believe so. Uh-huh. It's coming off now, sir. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Grady, weren't you once the caretaker here? Why, no, sir. I don't believe so. You, uh, married man, are you, Mr. Grady? Yes, sir. Hmm? I have a wife and, uh, two daughters, sir. Hmm? And, uh, where are they now? Oh, they're somewhere around. I'm not quite sure at the moment, sir. Mr. Grady, you were the caretaker here. I recognize you. I saw your picture in the newspapers. You, uh, chopped your wife and daughter up into little bits. And, uh, then you blew your brains out. So, this is a very important scene to both the movie and my theory. First thing to notice is that Grady introduces himself as Delbert Grady, not Charles. And yet Jack immediately recognizes it. He doesn't question the name at all. He doesn't ask if Grady is related to Charles Grady, or goes by the name Charles, or anything like that. But more importantly, Jack mentions that he read about Grady in the paper. At first I thought, well, Jack probably read about the Grady murders because it happened recently in the 1970s. But then I remembered he had no knowledge of any Grady before Ullman's talk with him. On top of that, there is no scene where Jack reads a newspaper prior to this scene in the movie. Or is there? This is where the Overlook scrapbook comes in. You see in the novel and in one of the drafts of the script, Jack finds a scrapbook containing newspaper clips, photos, and other documentation of all the grisly horrors of the Overlook. In a script dated the 2nd of April 1978, there are notes explaining 
We see pages with early photographs of the hotel, newspaper clippings pasted on them which document the lurid and sinister history of the hotel. Murders, suicides, and fatal accidents involving its legendary rich and famous clientele. The same script notes continue. We will film a visual impression of Jack spending hours sitting on the floor of the basement pouring through the pages of the scrapbook. We will also show close-ups of the stories he's looking at. The scene was even shot but then cut by Kubrick in post-production. I know what you're saying, but Elias, you always say we only use the information on screen to answer things. No outside postulations or background information from source material, to which I answer, the scrapbook is in the film. In fact, in this scene. As we can see here, the scrapbook is the only other thing on the table other than Jack's typewriter. We know it's the book because in this shot, we can see pics of the newspaper clippings. So it's safe to assume that Jack is using the scrapbook as inspiration for his novel, and it's why he recognizes the name Delbert Grady when he speaks to Grady in the bathroom. Now, if only we had access to the content of the scrapbook, we could maybe get some info on the newspaper article that Jack read. Maybe a date or a time. Well, I have to thank censusofcinema.com because they have pulled together the most detailed analysis to date of the scrapbook's current contents, together with a description of some of its supporting exhibits held at the Stanley Kubrick Archive at the University of the Arts in London. So what were my findings? In an article named Caretaker Axe's Wife Twins at Overlook Hotel Shoot Self, it explains that officers John Cassidy and Truman Wilson found the bodies of Delbert T. Grady, age 46, and twins, aged about 12, who were also called Rose and Molly. His wife was called Delphine. A hotel caretaker who axed family may be victim of cabin fever. By the same writer, we learn that Grady hailed from Boston. So yes, the article refers to Grady as Delbert Grady, not Charles Grady. More importantly, it notes that his daughters were twins at the age of 12. So there's a clear distinction. Delbert Grady and Charles Grady are two different people, at least chronologically two different people. It's important to note that in the novel, there is no Charles Grady. So why did Kubrick even bother to leave that in if he didn't use the scrapbook? Well, the answer can be found in the ending of The Shining. As everyone knows, at the end of the film, we see an image of Jack that is dated July 4th, 1921. This, along with Jack's strange nostalgia of the Overlook, indicates that he, too, like Grady, was here before. Grady and Jack seem to be reincarnating and then reliving the horrors they committed in the past. This is why there are two each. Charles Grady and Delbert Grady, 1921 Jack, and Jack Torrance. There's more, though. Listen to this clip by Stephen King on the conversation that he had with Kubrick about The Shining. I had a discussion with him beforehand. Uh, he said, Stephen, Stanley Kubrick here. Don't you agree that all stories of ghosts are fundamentally optimistic? I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, if there are ghosts, it means we survive death. And that's fundamentally an optimistic view, isn't it? And I said, well, Mr. Kubrick, what about hell? And there was a long pause on the telephone line, and then he said in a very stiff and very different voice, I don't believe in hell. And I thought to myself, well, that's fine, but some of us do, and some of us believe that ghosts may survive, and that may be hell. The clip made me realize that Jack and Grady are not reincarnating in a Buddhist or Hindu sense but are actually being forced to reincarnate by the power of the hotel. And this gives us an indication of what Kubrick was trying to say in a more allegorical sense. Kubrick is showing us that we are subject to our own destructive cycles, and these cycles trickle onward, affecting all those around us for generations. Something interesting that I found in the scrapbook is the suicide of Mrs. Mary Falico, the woman in room 237. The article is dated July 4th, the same date as Jack's photo. I can't help but draw a link to the analysis I did in my previous video on The Shining, one where Kubrick is critiquing the nation as a whole. July 4th is America's birthday, and to link it with these vile events seems to link the nation with a dark past. 
This is not to say that America is evil, as many of my video commenters think I was saying, but rather that all societies have skeletons in their closet. Cycles of abuse and violence. And so the two Grady's and the two Jack's are really souls that are both perpetrators and victims to not just the evil of the Overlook, but the evil of their past selves. Again, please take the time to comment, like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification because there's much more movie analysis coming in the following weeks. Thank you again, and I'll see you soon.